So we all love geckos, right? This adorable little baby lizard. Cresties, fat tails, leopards, leeches, whatever may have you. They're all really cool. And even for someone who's more of a snake guy like me, I think geckos are really cool. In fact, I'm trying to get into them a little bit more, but not just like the regular cresties, gargoyles, and leopard geckos. They are still really cool in their own right, by all means. But I also, because I'm me, like the kind of oddball stuff. So when I was doing some research, I was coming across geckos that I had only like really seen pictures of on like Nat Geo and stuff. And so I did a little bit more research and I came with a list of five oddball, weird looking geckos that you may not have heard of that make really good pets. Now, that being said, they all don't necessarily make the best beginner pet reptile, but they do make good reptile pets. Being geckos, none of them are incredibly large. Most of them can do with fairly small uh, habitats and enclosures, but we'll just get right into it. And it's a pretty good diverse little group that I came up with. So the first one is the fan-footed gecko. This one is more of an arid species. They're actually this really cool little lizard. They're found in parts of like Northern Africa and like Egypt and Sudan and places like that, where like a gravelly sandy substrate is a good thing for them. And they are fairly arboreal. Now they don't have like the sticky pads, obviously they're not sticky, but they don't have the toe pads like the like the crusties and the gargoyles do, but they are pretty arboreal. They have some decent little feet on them and why they get their name is they're fan footed. So they have those really big wide spread out toes with little claws at the end that are good for both running across the sand for the displacement of the weight that lets them travel across it easier, as well as the claws that allow them to grip onto rocks and things to climb up with them. So, you know, if you're gonna have one of these guys, a, a desert setup is good, um, and make sure that it's you have some height to it. So like a 10 gallon could kind of work, but I would want it to be taller. So maybe like a 15 high or something would be good. Because like I said, they won't climb up the sides, but like some pieces of slate or some like cork board that are like kind of propped up at a bit of an angle, they will absolutely make use of that. Um, they do need a little bit of humidity, kind of like 90% of reptiles, you know, with like Euromastics kind of being the exception. Um, so like a small, like if you take like some sphagnum moss and like a cork, like one of those little tubes, and you put some sphagnum moss in there and just keep that kind of moist, they'll absolutely take advantage of that. Um, spray down their enclosure a little bit because um, like a lot of the desert or arid reptile species, um, they don't really drink standing water very much. And while they're not going to be out in the baking North Africa desert sun all day, they do come out in like at night, they're corpuscular as well. So like at dawn and dusk, and they drink the dew that kind of collects like under rocks and under logs and things like that. And so that's what they'll absolutely take advantage of is, is they'll use that sphagnum moss as kind of a humid hide, which they do need, and then spraying down their enclosure for like a little bit of dew is good for their water. They can eat a variety of small insects, always dusted with calcium and uh, multivitamin supplements when necessary. So cool little arid semi-arboreal species, if you want to call it that. The next one is a really cool one that honestly, I have, don't know if I've seen in person or not. Um, and that is the viper gecko. These guys are another more arid species. They're probably more similar in care to like a leopard gecko. Um, they're from kind of like Pakistan and surrounding areas and they get their name from their keeled scales. So, you know, a lot of the more arid species of geckos, they kind of have like that bumpy skin, the bumpy scalation. Well, they're actually keeled like a viper or like a bull snake or something similar. And that's where they get their name is because a lot of vipers have that keeled scalation. So that's where they get their name. Um, they're very small. They're definitely some escape artists. So whatever enclosure you decide to put them in, make sure that it's escape proof. Like if it's a 10 gallon aquarium, make sure it's weighted and it has locks on there. So that way they're not getting out. Um, and then, you know, obviously like, uh, like one of the front opening ones, make sure that's really, you know, you make sure that that's locked because those things can kind of sometimes stick a little bit. Um, they're, they are nocturnal. A lot of geckos are kind of gopuscular. Viper geckos are strictly nocturnal. Um, they like to hide in like rock crevices and things. So when you think of like a big rock outcropping, you would see one like quickly shoot in to like a small like little uh, little crevice, like a little crack in between the big rocks like that. So when you're keeping them in captivity, you can use, you know, sand um, or gravel or things like that as a good substrate. No, not calcy sand. Um, that's a hill that I'll, I will die on. And then you can use pieces like slate 
or like the little ceramic flower pots that you uh, see a lot of times either in half or like flipped over on their sides. Those work really well. They will climb up and crawl and move around things. And again, they're an arid desert species, arid desert species. So they won't climb up the sides of the tank, but they will make use of a lot of stuff. And whenever you have an enclosure, a lot of the time when you have a more terrestrial species, people don't like to take advantage of that full space. But if you fill it with like small slant with with you know slanted rocks slanted cork board things like that that aren't on a steep incline the animals will absolutely take advantage of that and i absolutely encourage people to do so and then you end up with like a really cool enclosure that people are starting that their animals can take advantage of the full thing um they still need a little bit of humidity so you know give them like a small little basking spot or like with an under tank heater like in like the nine like a 90 ish hot spot and then on the cool side give them a humid hive they need that and again they are insectivores the wide variety of insects with the multi dusting and calcium and everything like that this next one is a little bit not so arid and that is the oceanic gecko so this one has a number of different names um the oceana gecko um the pacific uh the pacific ocean gecko as well as uh the voracious gecko a couple times they've been referred to as kind of more like a little bit more colloquially um, these guys are really cool. They're kind of found throughout um, New Guinea, French Polynesia. Um, they have been introduced supposedly um, in both New Zealand and Hawaii, but they have not had any real documentation of established populations. So maybe one popped up and it shouldn't have been there from like being transported with like in between like logs or lumber or something like that, or maybe just misidentified but they haven't had really established populations as an invasive in either of those two places. Um, they get a decent size, you know, probably somewhere in between like a skunk gecko and a toke. Um, they are insectivores. They will let you know if they don't like to be messed with. And let's be honest, most geckos don't really like being handled. Like the cresties, the leopards, the fat tails, gargoyles, and even leeches to a degree can. But, you know, other than that, most geckos don't really, be, really don't like being looked with. They're more of a display observing kind of just kind of letting them do their thing and enjoying species and these guys are absolutely part of that um they are they do have the pads so they are able to climb up the glass and do things like that so give them plenty of places to hide plenty of branches lots of cover um a decent little basking spot of like you know the up, up about 90 kind of keep them like a toke you know keep them humid keep them moist but give them a little bit of heat not just like room temperature and you'll do just fine you don't see them too often but like on importers tables or like kind of that like weird oddball table that you see at reptile shows they're there and i think it'd be a really cool species to get into um the next one is i think it would be really really cool um and honestly i might should have saved this as a showstopper but i'm just going to keep on with this and that is the tanaki cave gecko so we have all know like the Chinese gay geckos, right? Those like super cool colored, like black, gray, purplish, big, bright, red, orange eyed, like little miniature leopard geckos. Although they definitely cannot be kept like little leopard geckos. They need to be kept cool. They need to keep very humid. These guys are a Japanese cave gecko and they are very locale specific of a bunch of different subspecies and localities of Japanese cave geckos. And this one is really cool. This is the Tanaki cave gecko. These ones actually can get pretty long, like in like the six plus inch area, but they're really long and slender, but they still kind of have that same really cool, like Halloween-ish looking coloration where it's that like orange yellow and the kind of those black and purples with still that big striking eye they're really cool treat them kind of like the chinese cave gecko too so keep them cool try not to get them over like 82 85 ever like those room temps in like the mid to high 70s are great for them keep them humid make sure you know you don't like overfeed them because they can overfeed a little bit so just kind of small frequent meals work really well for these type of geckos they're really cool. You don't see them really a whole lot. You kind of have to like be keeping your eyes out for them. But if you ever come across one, the Tanaki cave gecko or really any of the Japanese cave geckos, they're really cool. The Chinese are getting really popular. And, I, and I'm aware that like I keep saying like these things, it sounds probably really bad for the YouTube algorithm. Um, but the Chinese cave geckos are getting really popular. 
and because of that the Japanese ones are too and they're becoming increasingly more of a higher commod or of a more of a wanted commodity so the price of those are going to be more than the Chinese gay geckos but they're also a really cool unique species that I think is probably worth the price a little bit too and then the last one is one that's been around for a while but it's always been a bit of an oddball species and that's the frog-eyed gecko so another arid species these guys are kind of found all over the Middle East, like just kind of not like widespread, but their populations are found in pockets kind of all over just the entire like, you know, Central Asia of the little corridor. Um, they're really, really cool. They have their scales, like remember how I talked about how they're kind of bumpy? Well, really, they're more like almost like comb like scales. They're really, really cool. And they get their name for a pretty obvious reason. And that is their head and they're obviously their very large pronounced eyes almost look like a little frog that just happens to be attached to a little gecko body for the rest of it, which looks really cool. They don't get very large. They honestly don't like being handled very much. They're pretty skittish. But if you set up a really cool, like little deserty, arid uh, setup, it's really fun, especially kind of at night, like right when it's about time for you to go to bed or like when you're kind of settling down for the day and the lights kind of start getting low if you keep them in a room where that has like a window to get that so they can get that really good photo period that's when they'll kind of start to come out and you can sit there and watch them hunt for little crickets and they have just this really cool like cute attitude that's fun to watch um all of these different geckos are kind of oddball and harder to find but they're really more for just kind of like a hey keep this in mind or maybe you've never heard of or thought about keeping this type of gecko before because we're all just kind of flooded with the more common ones and again there's nothing wrong with those whatsoever because obviously i have pretty much all of those species anyway but i just think it's really cool to learn about all these other different ones and maybe keep you know possibilities open for engine and for eventually keeping some of these oddball species because honestly i think it would be really cool for several individuals to just decide like you know what i really like this locality of viper gecko or i really like frog-eyed geckos and they commit to getting like a small group of them and then they keep them for a long time and they start breeding them and then they're known for that and then that way they move forward in the community as being known for that and being you know a really good addition to the reptile hobby and community of keeping the diversity up um, hopefully you enjoyed this video if you have any questions comments concerns please let me know down in the comments below all that social media and everything like that um, I have a whole playlist of a bunch of different five animal lists that you want to go check out. Um, hit that playlist, please. It helps the algorithm, keeps my click rate up, um, lets YouTube know that I exist. Uh, and so that way I can continue to hopefully have fun researching for myself as well as spreading a little bit of an ed animal education as I stutter all over the place and love and passion to all of you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.